Bonjour à tous, Jane Dobré. Je vous laisse découvrir l'interview d'Eva Smuk Stratenvers qui a créé la première Folk High School de Pologne. Euh, J'ai eu beaucoup de plaisir à réaliser cette interview parce que les Folk High School sont un concept de pédagogie innovante et en même temps très ancien. Donc j'espère que cette interview vous donnera envie de développer de la pédagogie innovante en France. Et je vous laisse apprécier ce petit moment avec Eva. Folk High School tradition started in Denmark in 19th century, so long time ago. And um, the founder or the person who promoted the idea was uh, Grundvik, Nikolai Grundvik. And uh, in Denmark, he's a very, very known person. Uh, like outside Denmark, maybe people know more Hans Christian Andersen. But uh, in Denmark, people really, really know who was Grundvik. And when they, uh, when we ask them about the tradition of democracy or tradition of cooperation or um, cooperation uh, in, in Denmark, they often say that this is because of Grundvik and because of the concept of folk high school. So though, The tradition started long time ago. It's still alive in modern Denmark. And what I like in the history of Folk High School is that actually they started in a moment in Denmark which was a very critical moment because the, the beginning of uh, 19th century and the first half of 19th century, Denmark went through a lot of different crises. It was crises in economy, in politics, everywhere. And the concept of folk high school uh, was um, that maybe outside we are losing. We are losing territory, we are losing economically, but we can gain inside. We can start from uh, working together, uh, making the farming techniques better, Uh, creating together some kind of cooperatives that, for example, process our milk, or the farmers buy together some equipment or some machinery and they help each other. And, uh, and as, a, as a effect, the, the Denmark became really, really rich country and very, very strong farming country. So actually the first folk high schools were connected with farming. Uh, now it's not, not the case, I will mention in a moment, but the first folk high schools which were developed, which started in, in, in Denmark, they were for farmers. And the moment when they were created was a moment when the farmers got their independence after many years of feudal society. Uh, and there was new constitution established and uh, the farmers could come into parliament but they were not really able to present their interests because nobody taught them there were no schools for farmers and uh, then the, the the idea was to 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 help them to be good farmers open for cooperation but also to be real citizens to represent their interest in the parliament. So, uh, Grundvik thought it's so many few aspects which are crucial to in such a folk high school, and they are still alive there. So, for example, one is um, living word. So it's very important that there's not too much books, the theory, and... Um, Of course, books are important, but sometimes the teacher hides behind the books. And, uh, and it has to be a direct contact with the teacher and this living word. And the teacher has to be kind of an example for students, but also what is unique for folk high schools is that uh, the teachers cannot teach ex cathedra. It means that they cannot create a artificial distance between themselves and the students. They, in folk high schools, we often live in one building. 
with students. What means that there is plenty of time that we can discuss, talk, we can watch films together, and uh, we can eat together, uh, we can come into different arguments maybe, but this, the, the closeness between teacher and students is quite important. So this is second thing, the relationship between teacher and the student. And the third thing is uh, something what, what uh, Danish people, they say that there is special word which is difficult to translate and in Danish this, this word sounds oplistening, which means some kind of enlightenment. So, um, so the, the Grundvik was convinced that it's very difficult to teach somebody who is kind of a dead person. Maybe he is alive in a sense that he's breathing or eating, but there is no life in him. He, he really does not understand that it's important to learn, that it's important to develop, it's important to set some goals. And uh, in uh, folk high schools is something what we really put a lot of attention, that the students are motivated in a deeper sense, that it's not they treating, okay, we take just one more course because it's for free. But they really see it's important that it's resonating in them, that they it's important for them, they, they feel that, that fire inside, yes? This is what is crucial. And we help them that the fire is alive, yes? And we hope that the fire will not die during the whole education, because then it's not a folk high school. If the fire disappears, yes, we have to keep this fire alive in the folk high school, school but also later in life, yes? If we want to be really alive and participate in society and uh, and take care of, of, of what is around us, of nature, of environment, we have to keep this fire alive. Another important issue is uh, cooperation. Uh, that the age when, the, when the, the folk high school started, it was 19th century, it was the age of romanticism, and it was a bit more connected with individualism and, and heroes. And in folk high school, it's really stressed that we have to cooperate, we have to recognize that we were created not as lonely human beings, but we have been creating as societies, as communities, and we have to learn ways how to be with each other. And Gru Grundvik often stressed this, that in humanity there are two a bit contradictory um, contradictory um, trends. The one trend is that we as individuals, we want to develop, yes? We want to discover our potential, we want to discover our talents, we want to discover our vocation, and we want our freedom. And on the other side, other dimension is that we live in a community and the community somehow limits our freedom. And, and the art and what we also learn in folk high school is to how to find the right balance. Because for example, nowadays the society became very individualistic. People are very individualistic. The, the approach to, to at, at least this is what I see in Poland often, yes, that the people want to have good life, they want to develop their different talents, but they don't care so much about other people. And, and in folk high schools, we want to show that these two dimensions are very important, that of course you as a human being are important, but also community is important, and we have to learn how to live in a community how to live with other people. So this is why this cooperation is a crucial point, a teamwork, like many tasks that the students do, they do it in teams. So they have to quarrel, they have to develop a plan, they have to do something together, maybe it's a bench, maybe it's a small dryer for herbs, or maybe something more complicated, but they have to do it together. 
uh, so it was the, the, the fourth thing, cooperation with some philosophical background. And then the fifth one is, is learning by doing, learning by doing. And for me, this was something what really fascinated me in, in Denmark, because I came from Poland when I first met this method. And in Poland, everything was so theoretical. We learned so much theory. We are so good in theory, but we had so few these practical skills. So I was really uh, admiring how you can really learn by doing, not by learning. And uh, particularly maybe in our course, which I will be talking later, it's so important that the people do things, that they learn by, for example, farming, by working on the farm, or if they learn carpentry, they just do something concrete. But it was not the case so much in Poland when I, when I first met this method. So maybe these few, few aspects, they describe what folk high schools really are. And now in Denmark or other Scandinavian country, countries like Sweden or Norway, uh, there is like maybe 100 or 150 in Sweden folk high schools, and they have different profiles. So not necessarily connected with farming, and even more are connected with craft, art, gymnastic, films. But the, the idea is also that there is not very strong specialization. So for example, if, if there is focus a little bit more on, on films, there is always something different. So this a bit more holistic approach because we as humans, we, we do not have only our brains or our hands, but we have also our heart in a symbolic way. And to really learn, we have to be involved with our whole being. And uh, this is why uh, often in these folk high schools, it's few topics like maybe music, maybe craft, maybe sustainability, or uh, there's kind of a specialization, but never this narrow specialization. And one thing which I also love in folk high schools, and we use it here, is singing. And singing is strongly connected with the team building or community building. And myself, I believe that the singing is very deep in human nature. It's even deeper than, than the speech. And when we try to sing together, and when we, it's not to sing, to make performance, to, to, to prepare a, a kind of a show for other people, but just to have a joy of singing together, of creating this one sound together, that we try to, like a beautiful choir is the choir not of solists, but of those who really try to find a, a, a sound together, discover the sound together. And, and it, really, it really functions in, in modern folk high schools, and we even teaching organic farming, we sing also. I met, as I mentioned, I met uh, folk high schools idea in Denmark, and I got really fascinated. I experienced this enlightenment for myself, that this is something what I want to do in Poland. And, uh, and since then, it's more than 20 years, I slowly introduce it. Uh, and before we did different courses, they were not courses like dormitory courses because we also didn't have the proper space. But we did courses for local people. They were coming maybe for 20 days, for workshops for five hours. And we used this method to teach them a little bit uh, about ecology, about health, about craft, uh, something what actually is behind agroecology or, or sustainability, yes? That, uh, and also this idea that you can develop yourself, you can become a stronger person, more responsible, more happy in your life, more creative, but still be in a community and work care for the community, be responsible also for your community. But uh, since 
four, three, four years, we got a chance with the Velux Fund to build a proper place. So now we have uh, our folk high school with, with uh, four workshops room and with a dormitory for between 20 and 30 people maximum. And we can make the courses which are connected with this living together. And we decided to make a course on organic farming. And uh, it's really the very first initiative like this in Poland. Nobody did it before. So we were aware that to, to create such a course and run such a course, we need some help from other more experienced people from other countries. So this is why accept this grant from Velux, which helped us to build the Folk High School premises. Also, it provided money for two courses, two courses for, we wanted 20 people, but the first course were just 13 people because it was very, very beginning. And second course started 20 people. Uh, but for the international cooperation, I wrote separate project and I wrote it to Erasmus Plus. Erasmus Plus has different programs and uh, we applied in a program for adult education. Earlier, this program was called uh, from the name of Grundvik, Grundvik, but now it's just called adult education and uh, it's action called strategic partnership. We invited Denmark because they are the homeland of Grundvik. We invited Germany who also have very good tradition of uh, dual education, what means practice and theory. And we invited Switzerland because uh, Switzerland does not have what we call folk high schools but they have very, very similar system. You can like, you can compare it like the wheel was invented in few places, yes. So this approach to education was maybe also developed in few places. And my husband, Peter, he finished, graduated the school for biodynamic farmers, which was very similar to Folk High School because, for example, they sing, except learning farming, of course. They made theater. They paint, they learn other aspects of, of, of life. So in Danish, there are two words for teacher. One word is just teacher, and second word is the one who shows wonders. And in folk high school, or how I think we should teach agroecology or sustainability is to is to really show wonders. Show wonders because the, this life is wonderful. It's a real miracle that it exists. And it's on many levels. It's how the life in soil or how soil happened. It's, it's when, you, when you look from the, I, myself I often walk and I see, it's really amazing how this world was created, it had functions. And uh, I could give a maybe more practical example when we, observe one of the our best teachers, Reto Ingold, how he was teaching about soil. Yes. Soil. And for us it was very good example how such topic can be covered in a very, very alive way and still very professional because soil for agroecology you can say is one of the basic issues. This is what we want in um, in future, that the soil is still here. The soil that has been developing for hundreds of years, that it's not destroyed, but it's still here. But for students, it's very important to understand, to understand the history of soil, that it's really a whole process, but also to understand the meaning and also the beauty and the wonder of soil. So, for example, when I was watching Reto, who taught, us, taught the students about soil, I admire how he connected the theoretical knowledge, uh, for example, what really 
soil mm -hmm. consists of, but he presented in such an exciting way, like for example, uh, telling that soil in essence is uh, created from two main ingredients and that first it starts with this mineral matter and that slowly the matter is like big rocks they are uh, under influence of wind and, and, and water and other atmospheric uh, factors and that slo slowly this process of weathering is happening so the rocks change into stones and the stones change into gravel and gravel change into sand and sand changes into silt and then it becomes really, really tiny. And on the other hand, there is this organic matter, so all living beings and they at one moment they die and the process of decay starts and all the uh, life which is in, in soil, like for example insects or or uh, nematoda, or um, fungi, or bacteria, everything starts to, to make it smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it becomes also really, really tiny. And then in a mir it's kind of a miracle that this tiny mineral meets this tiny organic matter, and then it's soil, it's the beginning of soil. And of course, then it becomes like aggregates, and there is, between these aggregates, they are, small rivers of water or, or bubbles of air and then there's place for earthworms and the whole beautiful life starts. And uh, for example, when the, the Reto was doing this lesson, he noticed that not everybody really follows because you can make it exciting, but for example, some of our students, they do not have really biological background or geological background and maybe they didn't even learn to focus for a longer time. So for example, he at one moment said, so let's stop for a moment and let's have some drawing exercise. So everybody got a piece of paper and crayons and the task was to make your own drawing of life in soil. and. Uh, I later talked with him about it and he said, I just needed some form of evaluation because in folk high schools, we do not have a classical exams, but we as teachers have to be aware if the students follow of many reasons. They could maybe at one moment, maybe the lesson is really fascinating, but because of something, maybe they, they lost their attention. So we have to be always aware and we have to to use different methods to help them to come back, to join, join the process. So, so in uh, uh, teaching uh, agroecology or how we teach organic farming in, in our folk high school, we have to at first provide really, really good material with excellent methods. But at the same time, we have to be uh, all the time aware that the student follow and that this fire is in them. So the teachers in folk high schools, they have to be people who have also the fire inside. So the people who are passionate about what they do. And among our teachers, we have professors from the Agriculture University or Warsaw University Biology Department, but we have also farmers and some of the farmers maybe they have just vocational education but they are such experts and they could make such excellent lessons that the students will not leave the room so eva can you tell me how to say uh, ver de terre in polish okay, thank you you are welcome <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to do this. But yeah, yeah, that's...